A galactic federation is here, collaborating with Earth's government. I know this sounds like a sci-fi franchise spin-off, but the account of Professor Haim Meshed, former Space Division head of the Israeli Defense Forces, is so rich with detail, we must sit up and pay attention. Let's explore. Hi everyone, and welcome to Project Blue Book, where we explore all things unidentified. I am Thor, and thanks for tuning in. On December 2nd, 2020, the Israeli newspaper Yeriot Aharonot published an interview in Hebrew with the former Israeli Defense Forces Chief of Space Division, retired Brigadier General Hai Meshed, 87 years old at the time. And on December 10th, a redacted version was published in the Jerusalem Post in English. If his claims are true, the article blows the lid of governmental secrecy regarding alien presence. They are here, he says, they have an organized galactic federation, almost Star Trek style, and they have some serious concerns about our stewardship of Earth. But first, let's establish credentials. Haim is the recipient of the Chief of Staff Citation, the highest non-combat decoration awarded by the IDF for merits that remain classified to date. And he also received the highest civilian defense honor of the State of Israel, the Israel Defense Prize, three times, which is normally doled out for top secret work. He served in the highly secretive Unit 81, which provided intel to the IDF's Military Intelligence Directorate and was responsible for the successful launch of 20 Israeli satellites, including spy satellites. Haim is a former chair of the Space Committee of the National Council for Research and Development for the Ministry of Science, Technology and Space, and a member of the Steering Committee for the Israel Space Agency. Its current chairman, Isaac Ben Israel, calls Haim the father of the Israeli space program, nothing less. He is a guy the state of Israel, including the Mossad, values greatly and trusts completely. Since retiring, Haim has traveled the world lecturing in academia as a visiting professor and scholar of aeronautics and astronautics at various space technology research institutions. In November 2020, he published in Hebrew the book The Universe Beyond the Horizon, Conversations with Professor Haim Meshed. Written by Hagar Yanai, the book is yet to be published in English. Because of the close proximity of the publishing of the book, of course, this bombshell disclosure article in Yediot Aharonot was instantly labeled a publicity stunt. To which Haim replied, If I had come up with what I am saying here today five years ago, I would have been hospitalized. Now, I have nothing to lose. End quote. In him, we have yet again a defense professional coming forward in the twilight of his life with incredible disclosure stories. In the interview, Haim says the U.S. government is and has been in contact with extraterrestrials from the Galactic Federation. He further states that extraterrestrials have been in contact with not just the U.S. government, but multiple other government officials on Earth for decades. He said there are agreements in place for the extraterrestrials to conduct research. We have all heard of the agreements, sometimes broken, surrounding Dolce, the Rio Auxiliary, regarding technological research gifted to the government in exchange for access to human DNA and a permission for experimentation. But their research also includes studies of the fabric of the universe. Haim further elaborates that there are secret underground laboratories on Earth and on Mars, and that they are populated by humans as well as extraterrestrials collaborating on multiple projects. The book further elaborates on stories of aliens preventing nuclear disasters, including an unknown and unspecified nuclear incident during the Bay of Pigs invasion. They have intervened in wars and interfered with our nuclear experimentation. We are reminded of the green lights witnessed absorbing fallout from nuclear testing. And we are also reminded of the red orbs appearing at nuclear missile sites, including Malmstrom Air Force Base, demonstrating they can turn nuclear power on and off at will. 
And we are further reminded of the incident at Ramstein Air Force Base, Germany, where a UFO parked itself over the runway and beamed the flight tower, turning off its radar signature while visible, then turning off its visual signature while being present on radar, and then turning off both its radar and visual recognition simultaneously. In essence, demonstrating to us how they can circumvent our VFR and IFR detection systems with impunity. There are no leaked clear images of the actual event. The Galactic Federation keeps their presence secret to prevent hysteria until such a time in the future when humanity is ready to embrace this information collectively. Haim states, the landscape of academia is changing and evolving. In his words, today they're already talking differently. Trends in thinking and universities abroad are changing, end quote. Is Haim suggesting we have evolved closer to a revelation, that we are more susceptible to the information of the unidentified than we used to be? Change seems to be at hand, according to now 89-year-old Haim Ashed. This is important because according to him, the reason aliens are unwilling to reveal themselves to us is that we have not been ready, that in essence, we can't handle the truth. One of the truth handling aspects likely involves religion. That's my conjecture. It's been widely reported by whistleblowers that are hint at it without anyone yet giving a comprehensive picture that religion, as we know it, was orchestrated to guide us, some say control or manage us, but certainly to instill a direction within humanity. Some have stated they've seen evidence of religious events being orchestrated by aliens. If we dig into the Old and New Testament stories juxtaposed with what we know about unexplained phenomena now, it makes more sense as science as opposed to magic and miracles. We can debate if religion in general has worked well for us or not, and if it serves us now for the next steps we need to take to elevate our consciousness. Regarding the we're not ready statement, let's also remind ourselves of Whitley Streeper and others who have encountered the alien message to us by way of telepathy and by way of crop circles. A new world awaits us if we can take it. Juxtapose that to Haim's statement, we're not ready. Yet, he alludes to changes and evolution in academic thinking towards a place of readiness. The doctrine still is, however, we're not ready. Haim, in his book, suggests their fear is shared and agreed with by our governments, per the Brookings Institute paper from 1960 regarding the Colombian exchange, principally stating that a more advanced civilization destroys the less advanced civilization when encountered that a panic and chaos would ensue on Earth upon the full revelation of extraterrestrials, accompanied by an inevitable breakdown of religion and society as a whole. Instead of having a few failed states, we would end up with an entire failed planet, left in chaos, in a state of war, is the prevailing theory. And it's not even about preserving us or our societies primarily, but our environment, Earth's biology, that seems to be their main concern. So preventing human societal chaos is about preventing our destruction of the environment. It's humbling to think about, and thus we remain in a persistent state of slow conditioning. Haim confirms multiple assertions by others, including they're interested in unlocking the mathematical secrets of the universe as well as the biological mystery of eternal life and they seem to have a keen interest in the realm of souls and humans' access to it. They are bioengineering hybrid beings, a mixture of us and them spliced together for the establishment of a successful future intelligent species. In the book, he goes at length into the mysteries of Skinwalker Ranch, claiming it is a portal to other dimensions, other worlds, and that the reason Robert Bigelow never spoke about his experiences and his research findings at the ranch is simply because they are the intellectual property of the Pentagon, and not him, contractually. He claims Harry Truman saw aliens, that Richard Nixon went to Wright Patterson to personally observe artifacts and life forms, and we know Wright Patterson is the designate Foreign Technology Research Center. And he asserts that Eisenhower did sign an agreement with an alien race. Laura Eisenhower, Eisenhower's great-granddaughter, has stated it is true. 
UFO researcher Nick Pope wants to know if Haim's information is first or second hand. Let's listen to Nick Pope on the Hannibal TV. Well, Haim Eshed is who he says he is and he did what he said he did. I guess my big question is, is he speaking about matters on which he has direct personal knowledge and experience from within government and from within the Israeli space program? Or is he simply citing his beliefs based on reading the literature or based on things that he's been told by a third party? And of course, it's interesting, you mentioned Paul Hellyer. It's, it's the same question. Now, Paul Hellyer is, is, I think, pretty clear on this. He said that when he was Defense Minister of Canada, and indeed, uh, I believe, Deputy Prime Minister at the time, this did not cross his desk, and it's only subsequently that he's talked to some of his military colleagues, some of whom are in the US, who've confirmed the reality of this to him. And I, my, my question is, with Aima Shed, again, it's the same question. Well, is this what you know or what you think? It's a fair question because his claims are extraordinary. They are an extraordinary match with countless testimonies of others, including former Canadian Minister of Defence, the Honourable late Paul Hellier, who went much further declaring the collaboration with extraterrestrials, having resulted in the creation of a behind-the-scenes shadow Earth government autocracy, a cabal, a topic for another episode. Haim's claims were also echoed by former Apollo astronaut Dr. Edgar Mitchell while he walked amongst us. This and more is all in Haim Ashed's book written by Hagar Yanai. The book remains available in Hebrew for $32 and we can only hope no one has purchased the English language rights worldwide in order never to publish it. You can watch and listen to this and other podcasts on Project Blue Book, where we explore all things unidentified. Each day, let's practice compassion and kindness. And please subscribe. I am Thor, and thanks for listening. See you next time.